rounds off my series of videos about the genetics of colours and patterns, particularly in Wyandot chickens. We started out with a basic introduction to genetic concepts and terminology, and we've worked our way through all the basic building blocks that we needed, the genes that make the blue colour, sex chromosomes, sex-linked genes and sex-linked crosses, and finally the genes that control the lacing pattern and the colours of the lacing and the ground colour of the Wyandotte's feathers. So by the end of the last video, we had covered the theory of it all. In this video, I want to show you how I used all that information when breeding my own Wyandotte chickens, in particular my favourite, the white laced buffs. Nine years ago, I was very lucky to obtain some fertile eggs from a line of Wyandots that carried the dominant white gene. Here in New Zealand, it is impossible for private individuals to import live chickens or fertile eggs because of our very strict biosecurity laws that protect our native wildlife. And since we have almost no native animals, that pretty much means birds. So although I'd love to have some of the chicken breeds available in other countries, we New Zealand chicken breeders are very restricted in what we have to work with. But I managed to get some fertile eggs of Wyandotte chickens carrying the dominant white gene. When they hatched, I had a mixture of different coloured chicks. Two of them were the white laced buff colour that I wanted. Unfortunately, both of them turned out to be boys. I called them Bufter and Buttercup. The following year, they were old enough to breed from, and I mated Buttercup with a silver-laced Wyandotte hen. This time, I know what genes I'm dealing with, and so I know what to expect in the chicks. Buttercup has one copy of the dominant white gene, which is what's giving him the white lacing on his feathers. Plus he has two recessive genes for the gold ground colour, one on each of his two Z chromosomes. Miss Silver, the silver laced Wyandotte hen, has no dominant white gene, so two little eye genes, and she has one copy of the dominant silver gene, it's that silver gene that's making the ground colour of her feathers look silver. And of course we know she has only one copy of the silver gene because it's carried on the Z chromosome. And since she's female, she has only one Z chromosome. So all the female chicks will inherit her W chromosome. Plus the Z chromosome from Buttercup, which has no silver gene, so all the females will have feathers with the gold ground colour. All the chicks that inherit Miss Silver's Z chromosome, which carries the silver gene, will have the silver feather ground colour because silver is dominant. And of course they must inherit a Z chromosome for their father and so they will be boys. Quite separately to the inheritance of the feather ground colour, is the inheritance of the dominant white gene that affects the otherwise black lacing. Buttercup has only one copy of the gene, so he passes that on to half of his chicks, and the other half get the recessive gene that leaves the lacing black. So we should get half females with gold ground colour and half males with silver ground colour. And within each group, half will have white lacing and half will have black lacing. I hatched eight chicks from the first setting and nine from the second clutch. So statistically, they should have been about four of each colour. But I got a bit lucky. Six of the chicks were white laced buff. And of course, they were all female. Statistics are only reliable when you're working with big numbers, and 17 is not a big number. 
but this was probably my favourite breeding project, not only because I was lucky, but because it combined a sex-linked cross for the feather ground colour with a separate inheritance of the dominant white gene affecting the lacing colour. And it was very satisfying to actually see the sex-linked silver gene turning up exactly as predicted on all the males and none of the females. Plus, it did confirm what I believed about the genes that Buttercup was carrying. And it was lovely to see that cockerel with the silver gene plus the gene for dominant white, who, as predicted, had white feathers with white lacing. In other words, he was just pure white. I picked the best white laced buff female. I named her Butternut. Three of the others had some minor faults for the breed, so I didn't use them for breeding, and I sold the other two to another enthusiast. So the following year with Butternut, I had a chance to breed a white laced buff hen. I was interested to see what a chicken with a double dose of the dominant white gene would look like, so I bred Butternut with Buffter, the hatchmate of her father. I hatched more than one clutch, but combined, this is what I got. This time, of course, there was no silver gene in the parents, so they all had the gold feather ground colour. Remember that the birds had one copy each of the dominant white gene, and statistically each of them should pass on that gene to half their chicks. So we should expect half the chicks to be white laced buff like their parents, a quarter of them should get no dominant white gene from either parent and so have normal black lacing and a quarter of the chicks should get two copies of the dominant white gene. Since this was not a sex linked cross, the colours of the chicks didn't tell me which was male and which was female, so I haven't included the sex on this chart. With these 13 chicks, the proportions were nowhere near the half quarter quarter that was predicted, which just demonstrates very well that statistics really only work when you are dealing with big numbers. In this case, luck was on my side, and out of 13 chicks, I got 9 with a white laced buff colouring. Only one chick happened to not inherit the dominant white gene from either of his parents and so have black lacing. And three of them clearly had a double dose of the dominant white gene. As chicks, these had very pale chick down, almost white compared to the goldy fuzz of the chicks with one copy of the dominant white gene that would grow up to be white laced buff. And when these double dose chickens grew up, it was very clear to see that the double dose of the dominant white gene had a marked effect on the gold feather ground colour. These chickens hardly even looked laced at all because they have almost no pheomelanin expressed. If I didn't know their genetic background, I would never have guessed what it was. Of course, I did know that they had two copies of the dominant white gene, as well as the genes for the lacing pattern, so they were excellent for breeding, even though they didn't look very pretty. And the following year, I did breed from one of the hens with a double dose, her name is Chantilly, plus one of the white laced buff hens called Tommy Sue. But I wanted to try to deepen the buff feather ground colour to more of a deeper gold, so I bred them with a Wyandotte rooster who had excellent gold feather ground colour, although he had the black lacing. His name is Rufus. So these are a combination of the chicks from two different sets of parents, Rufus the black laced gold rooster, plus either Tommy Sue, a white laced buff hen with a single dominant white jean, or Chantilly, who has a double dose of the dominant white gene. All of Chantilly's chicks will be white laced 
and half of Tommy Sue's chicks will be white laced. And these numbers fit the statistics very well. The inclusion of eggs from Chantilly with her double dose of the dominant white gene has greatly increased the proportion of chicks with white lacing. And I was very happy with the richness of the gold feather ground colour. Again, I chose the best female white laced buff for breeding the following year. But unfortunately, one afternoon, a vicious dog that was visiting our neighbour jumped the fence and slaughtered several of my chickens, completely wiping out all my years of work in breeding and improving the white laced Wyandots. I hope that somewhere in New Zealand someone continues to breed Wyandots with white lacing. But for me, all I have left is a few feathers, some photos, and wonderful memories of all I learned about genetics in breeding these beautiful birds with the pure white lacing. I've enjoyed sharing all of that with you. Thanks for watching.